Billy Tate in here, and today I'm doing a other vlog. The other one did so well, it totally fast 10 views. Totally. So I'm doing a lot of vlog here, and in the last vlog, I had mentioned a little bit about my grandfather on January 25th of this year had a heart attack, but I didn't go into like real detail what actually happened, so that's what I'm going to be doing today, and not only am I going to be telling you about that, I'm going to be telling you what happened afterward, and so... Now here we go. So we were just sleeping and at five twelve in the morning my mother was woke up by a big bang and she told Dad Dad no answer and he never not answers when you're telling him. So she ran down the sash and he was laying on the ground. Dead, essentially. I mean, <laughs> dying. Yeah, dying. <laughs> couldn't breathe. Couldn't breathe, right. And Tassie locked the dog up here and told 911 and took him literally eight minutes to arrive. I had to give him CPR. Right, CPR. During that time. During that time. And they, we literally thought they were actually subbing cell outside to dinner. It was ridiculous. It was, it was that really big storm like, that we had had last year. Yeah, I mean, like eight we, inches or so. Yeah, I we got it. over a weekend, like between Friday and Monday morning, right. we had had, yeah, like, like a, eight inches. Eight, ten inches. Right. So I had still hadn't got out, really, to get to shovel most of that. It was really bad. Right. They had to literally shovel to be able to get up the walkway to get in the door. They had called extra people to shovel on that before they could get into the door, so. Wow. See, I mean, that was kind of weird. To waste half my time like that, I mean. Well, I guess they were, I don't know, thinking about that they're probably going to need to do so to get them out, but I'd say get them stable prior to shoveling right. snow, but right. that's just my modest right. opinion, so. So... Yeah. You know, we brought him back, and he was okay by, like, 5.20. at gives you time for him, like, 8 minutes. Yeah, so. I guess. I don't know. No, right. they lost him several times. Right. So, he, they were down there well over an hour working on him before they could stabilize him to get to the hospital. Oh, so, yeah. no, it wasn't 20 after. I mean, they just got there at about 20, 25 after and started working on him. And then it was almost an hour before... They were able to stabilize him enough to at least get him into to the hospital. Wow, uh, yeah. So, hmm. and then, you know, you know, he ended up having to be in ICU, and they yeah. sedated him, and then yeah. they cooled him down and reheated right. him up slowly over a period Did of a I few remember. days. And he totally believed he was out for seven days. He didn't know, he right. He had him. absolutely yeah. zero recollection of anything that took place. And he's been oh. very ill ever since. He hasn't really even yeah. fully recuperated from the heart attack. He still has I mean, a lot of problems. And he's in heart failure right now, as we speak. Right. I mean, let well. me give you an idea of this. You know, he was in RCU at its cellar. And then he went to Life Town in Monroeville. And then he went to Health South in Harmerville. And then he went to Transition Health Town in North Huntington. And then he went after that to. He's uh, been back in the hospital numerous times right. between Monroeville and Greensburg for the last. Really since August 4th. Right, when he, he got was discharged. From yeah, August 4th from Transitions. And he has been back in the hospital. He has not spent more than four days out of the hospital since he was discharged from transitions for, right. for skilled nursing care and PT. So that's how and, long And really, been. I guess no more on that since January, right? No. On my wrong. No, he's not spent four days out right. of the hospital since January 25th, 2016. Right, this year. Right. Wow, yeah. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have these stories and they're frightening and they're horrible you know but um yeah. really i guess it, he was lucky to have people home with him because 
a lot of people come home and they find, you know, God forbid, their right. loved one laying there, and it's just too late. You know, they're gone. But it might have been hours. But it, right. Before. Sometimes it's hours or days before a loved one finds someone and says, oh, you know, my God, you know, my father, my mother, my whatever, you know, my aunt, my uncle. But that's the case sometimes. But, you know, it happens. So. Yeah. So do we like percentage of people actually survive a heart attack? I know you said it was like pretty low, but how low? They said that there's only a total of five percent of t of people that actually have a heart attack at home that survive normally because most people have a heart attack like in the shower or when no one's at home someone's at work you know they're by themselves and that's it right. there, there's no one there to really do a uh, cpr or, or right. anything so he so was they, awfully lucky i mean he was very lucky yes thank so god he was part that. of that five percent wow survival rate that, that a lot of people lucky. don't make it through that either you know so it's hard because he's just suffering now. I mean, he can't get better, and he's constantly in the hospital. Yeah, so yeah, that's... well, he has a lot going on. I mean, he has liver problems, he has kidney problems, he has congestive heart failure, he has COPD. hypertension. He has COPD, which is, you know, his lung, po you know, uh, problems with his lung. He has, you know, obstruction pulmonary disease is what it really is. So, it's, it, I, I don't know, you know, he has numerous things going on, really. Right. The lung, when the lungs and the heart aren't working, <laughs> you're not in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one organ in your whole body that can rejuvenate itself, and that's the liver. Right, uh, 100%. Lo right, 100%. Your lungs do very, very little rejuvenation. Your heart, very little. Doesn't really, none of that really will ever come back to full, you know, to its full capability. Uh, it just doesn't do it. It won't. It can't. Right. You know, then to deal with the fact that he's morbidly obese, he's way, way, way overweight of what he should be, and that's a contributing factor. So he's got numerous things going on here. But, and what the weird thing about COPD is he's never smoked, smoked in his never life. Never smoked a cigarette But he his has whole lived life. around. So, uh, Secondhand smoke his whole right, life he's been around, yeah. So, so, you know, my mother was a three-pack-a-day smoker, and uh, I smoked for years. I quit. Five years ago, when my mother died of coal, uh, colon cancer, yeah. I haven't had a cigarette since. But yeah, I mean, he's lived around secondhand smoke for really his whole life up until the last five or six years, and that. So, right. But that's the story. So, thanks for watching. That was my grandfather's heart attack story. If you have and any other stories or whatever you like to share, leave a comment. Right. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.